result of any impropriety at all by uh, the last witness. Uh, the Commonwealth has other witnesses that it can present uh, during this brief pause in Mr. Sanchez's testimony. So we'll turn to Mr. Hagan for further evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. The Commonwealth calls Paige Ayala. For the testimony you should give this court and jury, and the issue now pending between the Commonwealth and the defendant at the bar, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, shall be God. I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Would you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury and spell your first and last name, if you would? Yeah, Paige Aiello. It's P-A-I-G-E-A-I-E-L-L-L. -L -L. How old are you, ma'am? Uh, 26. Uh, how are you employed? I work at a pediatrician's office. Ma'am, I'm calling your attention now back to the summer of 2012. Um, were you living in a certain area near Boston at that point? Yes, Medford. And what was your occupation back in the summer of 2012? I worked at a hair salon as a receptionist. Now, during the summer of 2012, Ms. Aiello, did you frequent uh, Boston nightclubs, uh, in particular the nightclubs that are in what's called the theater district of Boston? Yes. And did those nightclubs that you frequented um, include what's known as Club Cure, Club Rumor, Club Venue? Yes. And approximately how often would you go to those clubs back in the, the summer of 2012? Almost every weekend. So about once a week then over the weekends? Yes. Would it be both nights of the weekend or just one? Or would it vary? It could be one to three nights. And calling your attention out to Club Cure in particular, did you become familiar uh, in Club, Club Cure in the summer of 2012 with some of the staff that worked there? Yes. Did you also become familiar with some of the regulars who you had seen there? Yes. Um, during your time in the summer of uh, 2012 or thereabouts, frequenting Club Cure, did you ever see any professional athletes or celebrities there? Yes. Uh, what type of celebrities or athletes did you see there? Football players, baseball players, soccer players, um, hockey players, um, musicians, um, TV celebrities. I'm calling your attention now um, to an individual by the name of Aaron Hernandez. Um, back in the summer of 2012, July of 2012, did you know who Mr. Hernandez was? Yes. How did you know who he was? Um, just from the news and knowing that he's a popular player on the Patriots at the time. So you knew him uh, by sight as of the July of 2012? Yes. And just for purposes of the record, Ms. Ayala, do you see Mr. Hernandez, the person we referred to as Aaron Hernandez, seated in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you just point him out and describe an article of clothing that he's wearing? Yes, he has a blue tie on. He's sitting right over there. Your Honor, if the record may reflect, Ms. Ayala has identified the defendant, Aaron Hernandez. Uh, Calling your attention now, uh, ma'am, to prior to July 15th, the year 2012, that being a Sunday night, um, had you seen Aaron Hernandez at Club Cure prior to that? Yes. Okay. And do you recall who, if anyone, was in his company when you had seen him before? Other Patriots players. I'm not a huge football fan, so I just know that the popular players were there. And you had seen him there with them in the past? Yes. Now, ma'am, I'm calling your attention now to the specific night being a Sunday night, uh, July 15th, 2012, into July 16th, the Monday. A, a Sunday night, are you aware, Ms. Ayala, what type of night that is in the, in the Club Cure back then? Did it have some special title? It's called Industry Night. What does that mean? So the people that usually work at the bars or the clubs in Boston usually go out on a Sunday night, so it's their night off, so they'll go there. And did you, in fact, on this particular night, Sunday night, July 15, 2012, go to the club, Club Clear? Yes. Who did you go with? I went with my friend Somia. Her last name is Tadger, T-A-D-J-E-R. And is Somia S-O-M-I-A? Yes. And had you gone to the clubs with Ms. Tajir before, before on other occasions? Yes. Now, Ms. Ayala, prior to testifying today, did you have an opportunity to watch some video surveillance footage from Club Cure purportedly taken from July 15th into the morning of July 16th, 2012? Yes. And did you recognize yourself on the video? Yes. And did you see that the video that was shown to you in some ways tracked at least some of your movements during the course of the night? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I believe without objection, the Commonwealth would seek to introduce this next numbered exhibit, 
a compilation video showing Paige Ayala, the witness currently on the stand. For the record, the compilation of the video is a combination of footage from Exhibit 29 and Exhibit 56. Without objection. Thank you. So, for the record, I've placed exhibit 176 on the video screen in front of you. And it lists the time as 1226.31. I'm going to stop at that time, 1226.34. Do you recognize the two people in the video there? Yes. Who is that? It's myself and Somia. This is you right here with the blondish hair? Yes. And this is Somia here with the darker hair? Yes. And is this, to the best of your knowledge, Ms. Aiello, um, when you arrived at Club Cure? on July 16, 2012. Yes. And for the record, I am uh, putting at fast speed so we can move the, the tape along. Do you stay outside for a moment here to uh, smoke? Yeah. Now I've stopped the video at 1229.31. There's a group of men that are coming in. Do you recognize any of those men? Yes. Which one do you recognize? The man with the white shirt and the braids. Is that an individual that you later had, had an encounter with or a conversation um, with later on that evening? Yes. The man on the cell phone here, do you know him? His name is Jeff London. What's he his job? Is a club promoter, to the best of my knowledge. Now, the people we see coming in, have you had an opportunity to look at other footage um, showing those people coming in? Did yes. You see their backs? Did you recognize the people on the video? Or at least a, one person? One person, yes, Aaron no, Hernandez. Objection. The question should be whom she recognized that evening. Uh, the video speaks for itself. Uh, overruled. And who, who do you recognize from that uh, video walking in the door now? Aaron Hernandez. Did you just smoke one cigarette, uh, Miss Aiello, or two, more than one? Could be more than one. I smoked a lot at the time. Just fast forwarding to uh, 1232, does that appear to show you actually entering the club at that point? Yes. And without backing up, did you end up showing your ID? Um, when we first got there, before we smoked a cigarette, we gave our IDs to the guy who stands at the door and he scans them. And he, does he put them into some type of photograph machine? Yes, to the uh, left of the mirror there's a device in the wall that they slide them into. This area right here? 
Yeah, maybe a little further. May I approach a witness briefly? You may. Just showing you, Ms. Ayala, what's been <coughs> marked for identification as the letter L. The license in the bottom <coughs> left hand corner, uh, do you recognize that license? Yeah. And who is that? That's me. And to the best of your knowledge, is that the license that you showed on July 16th, 2012 to get into Club Care? Yes. And what we see here, <coughs> camera number two, is that the area that you described where the club, the club staff would place IDs to be scanned or photographed? Yes. Ms. Aiello, call your attention to once you got downstairs. Describe, if you would, what, what the night was like, uh, downstairs at least. Uh, was it crowded or not crowded? Not crowded. And what, if anything, happened once you and your friend Samia got downstairs? We got there, and uh, two guys came up to us and were talking to us and being rather assertive and wanted to buy us drinks. So we got drinks with them and said thank you and um, tried to leave after that and they kept bothering us and trying to talk to us. And other than that, did you see any interact, any type of altercations or fights or anything happen downstairs that night? No. And at some point, um, the men who were bothering you, did somebody come uh, to assist you in some way? Yes. Who was that? That was Daniel. And that was the individual you identified with the, the uh, cornrows? Yes. The braids, I should say. Um, what, did, what did Daniel do? He helped us get rid of the uh, two guys that were bothering us. Was he alone or with somebody, Daniel, when he came over? He was alone. And what did he do to help get rid of them? He talked to us and danced with us and um, just kind of pulled us away from the other two guys. And did he? How, how did he interact with the other two guys? Was there anything hostile or was it still friendly? It was friendly. There was no... Um, altercations or anything. So no words of anger were exchanged between Daniel and these two men that were bothering you and your friend? No. May I approach Wayne You may. I'm just going to place on the board near you Sale, and I believe there's a pointer. What's been marked for identification as the letter J. Um, do you recognize this to be a fair and accurate representation of Club Cure? Again, putting aside perhaps the uh, newer improvements of the floors, mm -hmm. um, but the overall layout that's depicted on letter J, is that a fair and accurate representation of Club Cure? Yes. <laughs> If I can hand you the pointer. Can you tell us where this encounter, at least the one you're describing, occurred? Um, I'd say right about here. And for the record, you are pointing to the area to the side of the main bar, right where I'm pointing here? Yes. Was that the area where you and your friend Samia were standing? Yes. Is that the area where Daniel, as you knew him, uh, came in and assisted you in losing the two guys who were um, making unwanted advances. Yes. After those two men left, um, Ms. Ayala, w tell us what happened the rest of the night with Daniel, if anything. We talked for a few minutes and then um, said goodbye, and I didn't see him for the rest of the night. And did you ever see him with any of his friends or anything like that? No. And did you talk to him at all the rest of the night inside the club? No. Did you recall seeing Aaron Hernandez at all inside the club? No. Let me say, affording exhibit number 176 a little further, is it fair to state that's you outside now at about 1 o'clock in the morning? Yes. And you're back out for another smoke break? Yes. For the record, we're going to go through the video to save time. Stopping now briefly at 1.12, is it fair to state that you've been outside that entire time now? And when I say outside, I mean 
still within club cure grounds, but not downstairs? Yes. And I just fast forwarded through a part. Is it fair to state you went back downstairs with your friend briefly before the club closed? Yes. And now we forwarded to 2.14 a.m. Is that you and Samia leaving the club? Yes. Had the club closed at that point? Yes. Were the lights turned on or off inside the club? On. The, the person you just uh, hugged or kissed, was that a staff member at the club? Um, if you know. I don't remember. And maybe as the take place, just calling your attention back to when you were downstairs and had the interactions with Daniel. How would you describe uh, his demeanor towards you at that Friendly. time? What was it? Friendly. He wasn't overly aggressive? No. Did he seem um, agitated at all at any point? No. And at least inside of the club, did he make any unwanted advances toward you or anything like that? No. I've now fast forwarded to 214. Um, is that you on the screen there? Yes. And who is that with you? That's Daniel. And can you tell us what's happening here? Uh, we were saying hi, and he was trying to get my phone number, so we were just kind of talking, and um, he was trying to get it, and I was just denying. I didn't know him. I just met him then, so I said, you know, maybe if I ever see you again, I'll give it to you, but I didn't give it to him that night. And as far as... Um, Ms. Ayal, anybody around you, were you, did you have a serious boyfriend at the time? At no. That point? Um, was there anybody at the club who um, you had gone there with or were you on a date or anything like that? No. Over. That's no? It's a no. At some point, Ms. Ayal, did you indicate to Daniel that you wouldn't give him your number, at least not yet. Yes. And your friend Samia, is that her directly next to you? Yes. Who is she interacting with if you know? I don't know. Ms. Ayala, were you able to, to get some sense of what was going on around you? In other words, was anything of, of note going on around you? Any altercations, fights, disputes? No. For the record, it's now 2.17. Uh, did you just walk away from... Daniel, is that you and Samia here on the screen? Yes. And was that the last interaction you ever had with that man named Daniel? Yes. And at any point as you're walking, what we see here on the screen, did anybody express any problems or issues with Daniel that you saw? No. Could I fast forwarded to 220. Are you still hanging around in front of the club? Yes. Uh, who are you speaking to there, if you recall? I can't tell. Uh, do you know the club staff member named Jamie Furtado, the African American male in the suit? Um, I may have seen him, but I'm honestly not sure.
I'm sorry, I'll call your attention now to the end of this video, Exhibit 176. It's now 224, and on the video, uh, do you now appear to be leaving the area? Yes. And you're taking a right on to what street? Um, I'm not sure what the name of that street is, actually. Is that either Stewart or Nealon Street? Objective meeting. Sustained. Does, uh, do we the strike that. Tell us, where were you parked that night? We were parked by Tufts Medical Center. Where is that in relation to Club Cure? Um, it runs parallel to Tremont Street. So around the block then? Yes. And as you were walking to your car shortly after what we've just seen on the video, did you hear something? When we got to the car, we heard pops. How many pops did you hear? About three to five. Could you tell where the pops were coming from? They were rather loud, um, so my friend told me that Objection it must have been close by. Uh, that's, did you? Did those pops sound like anything to you? Um, they sounded like gunshots, to be honest. And you heard about three to five? Yes. And you, did you go home that night? Yes. Did you um, later learn that the man, Daniel, that you had met had been killed? Yes. And after that, at some point, did Boston police detectives uh, come and visit you? Yes. And did Boston police detectives uh, take a statement from you? And did you ultimately testify before the grand jury? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I have no further questions. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Ayala. Good afternoon. Um, let me just ask you a couple questions about the uh, club that night. So you said it was uh, it was non-existent uh, in terms of the crowd at Cure that evening. Yes, it was very slow. And your impression was that it was uh, it was uh, actually boring that night. Yes. And uh, I want to put words in your mouth. Uh, to you, it was uh, just one of those nights where you probably should have stayed at home, right? Yes. That that's a fair characterization of that night. Yes. Uh, and one of the reasons is that, um, quite literally, as soon as you walk down those steps, uh, that's when, uh, and got into the club, that's when the guy uh, uh, approached you who wanted to talk to you. Um, the two men that were bothering my friend and I, yes. Right, and one of the guys you described as creepy. Yes. And uh, so, we don't know his name, so, uh, but he had like a red polka dot shirt or something. Yes. And the guy with the red polka dot shirt, and I will use your, your term creepy so we'll know who we're talking about. The creepy guy, uh, he wanted to talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was as, basically as soon as you got downstairs, right? Yes. Then you walked over to the bar. Yes. Uh, allowed him to buy a drink. Yes. And then he kind of said, thank you, good night. Yes. He didn't leave. No. But luckily for you, within um, you know, a minute or so, um, uh, the man whom you knew as Daniel uh, came over and you asked him to kind of distract those guys, right? Yes. And you talked to Daniel for the next 10 minutes or so? About that time. So, um, and that was an effort so the other two guys would, would leave you alone. Right? Yes. Just one second, man. And so, in those, you know, your first 10, 15 minutes uh, there, uh, in addition to talking with Daniel, you danced uh, a bit? Yes. Um, and, uh, and then at that point, after, I believe it's 10 or 15 minutes, then you guys parted ways? Yes. All right. Um, and just one thing, just to be clear, uh, you did not see... Uh, Mr. Abru, you realize now Daniel's last name is Abru, correct? Yes. And you didn't see Mr. Abru get into a confrontation uh, or an altercation that evening, right? Correct. You didn't see anyone get into an altercation that night? Correct. You didn't see um, anyone spill a drink on Aaron Hernandez, did you? Correct. You didn't see anybody bump into Aaron Hernandez, did you? I didn't see him that night. You didn't see him at all Inside. Right. Um, you didn't see him at all in, inside Club Cure? Correct. Um, you had seen him in Club Cure before, you said? Yes. And you'd seen him with other Patriot players? Yes. 
And in those times uh, when you saw him in Club Cure uh, with other Patriot players, uh, you never saw him get into an altercation with anybody. I'm not sure. I There's been multiple times that I've been out that football players have been out, but I don't pay attention to them, so I would not know. Well, you, you certainly know what you don't know, uh, or you know what you know, I should say. And yeah. You never witnessed Mr. Hernandez in an altercation with anybody at Correct. Club Cure. Yes. Right? Or any other club, right? Correct. Thank you so much for your time. Anything further? Thank you, ma'am. You Thank may you, sit down. Please watch yourself. Come on. One of the Commonwealth calls Jamie Furtado. Summaries for the testimony you should give this court and jury and the issue now pending between the Commonwealth and the defendant at the bar. Tell me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Tell me God. Thank you, sir. I'm the officer. Watch your step out of seat, man. May I inquire? Please. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Doing well, thank you. Would you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury uh, and spell your last name for the record? Uh, Jamie Furtado. Uh, my last name's F-U-R-T-A-D-O. And uh, how do you spell your first name, just so the record's clear? J-A-I-M-E. And how are you employed, sir? Uh, I work for the Nightclub Cure Lounge. And how long have you worked for Nightclub Cure Lounge? Five years. And uh, additionally, sir, um, do you also work uh, for the state in some capacity? Yes, I work for DYS. And what do you do for DYS? I'm a group worker there. How long have you had that employment, sir? Two years. So I'm calling your attention now to uh, your employment at Club Cure. What specifically is, was your, is your role at Club Cure? I'm a bouncer there. Uh, I roam around the club, make sure everything's good. And how long have you been a bouncer there? Five years. So the whole time you've been a bouncer? Yes. I'm calling your attention now to a particular night, um, that being Sunday night, uh, July 15th, into Monday morning, July 16th, 2012, okay. based on something that happened at the end of the night for you. Do you recall that evening? Yes. We, and when were you uh, working? Excuse were me? you working that night at Cure? Yes, I was. What, was your, what were your hours? Um, I worked from 9.45 to 2 in the morning. And what was your role specifically from 9.45 till 2 in the morning? Room in the club. What does that mean in kind of layman's Just walking terms? around the club, each checking each area, making sure there's no issues. And as of that date, being July 15, 2012, did you know who Aaron Hernandez was prior to that? No. Uh, You'd never heard of him? I didn't really watch football like that back then. You weren't a football fan back then? No, not really. And sir, is it fair to state um, prior to testifying here today, you've had an opportunity to look at some video that pretty much tracks you or follows at least some of your movements at Club Cure that night. Yes. Uh, July 2012, July 16, 2012. Yes. Your Honor, this time I believe with no objection, the Commonwealth would seek to introduce a compilation video of, of the witness Jamie Furtado. That is a combination of Exhibit 29 and Exhibit 56. No objections. Without objection, thank you. That is received. Exhibit uh, 177 on the screen, and before we, we place in that video, can you explain for us? Um, where, did you work just for Cure, or was there a larger um, organization that uh, had owned other clubs? I mean, I mostly worked for Cure, but I also worked at that time at Rumor and Venue. Rumor and Venue and Cure, at, at least at that time, were they all owned by the same yep, group? Still are. They still are. Yep. And 
without putting up the map, is, is it fair to state that rumor and venue are kind of around the corner <coughs> yes. at, on Warrington at Warrington Street? Yes. And you sometimes work there? Yes, I did. I'm going to play uh, Exhibit 177. So this isn't a great angle, but um, do you recognize now the individual that's walking uh, downstairs into the club? Yes. And who do you recognize that to be? Uh, Aaron Hernandez. And you subsequently, after July 16, 2012, learned his name, is that correct? Yes. And we'll get into that in one moment, sir. Now, as what we see now, Mr. Hernandez coming downstairs, where were you at this point? I think I was already downstairs at that point, yeah. Just stopping now at on exhibit 177, 12, 30, 31. Now the person we see with the dreadlock or with the uh, braids, I should say, is that somebody you saw later on that night as well? Yes, it is. Now, sir, uh, before we get towards the end of the night, I call your attention now to some time after the video that we just saw, so sometime uh, just after midnight, um, the exact time being right around 12.30 or thereabouts, you were downstairs. Where were you positioned exactly? I was on the right side of the bar. And, sir, I'm calling your attention to what's been marked as the letter... J for identification. Do you recognize this, sir? Yes. And is this a fair, at least the map of the, the outline of the club, is that a fair and accurate representation of the downstairs of Club Cure as it existed in 2012? Yes. And the photographs themselves, other than the floors and the furniture and the paint job, is that essentially the condition of Club Cure back in 2012, July 16, 2012? Uh, there was carpets all in the floor at that point. So other than the, the wood floor, it was carpets? Yeah. And the furniture was a different upholstery? Yeah, the furniture was different too. Anything else uh, that was different? Yeah, um, yeah that's about it. That's oh, about the, the uh, bar. This used to be a DJ booth, not a bar. <laughs> this, is, this was a DJ booth in 2012, yeah. and now it's a bar? Yeah. So you indicated, uh, Mr. Furtado, that um, you were positioned near the bar, is that correct? Yeah, I was open on this side, right there. Right here on this yeah. side? Yeah. And right next to the bar, leaning up against it. At some point, did you notice uh, some people come down the stairs? Yes. And what, if anything, uh, you, did you notice about them when they came down? Nothing much. Um, well, was there someone that caught your attention based upon his size? Not really. Uh, well, let's have the answer stand, don't lead. The what, answer is no. What did you observe as you were standing there, sir? I just saw a couple guys coming down the stairs. That's really it. And when you saw the guys coming down the stairs, did you see any type of interaction once they got to the downstairs floor? Yeah, just quick words, nothing derogatory or nothing. Describe about what you saw as far as the quick words. Um, I saw Mr. Hernandez say something to the guy at the braids, but... It wasn't nothing bad. It just looked like he said something, and the guy acknowledged him, but it wasn't nothing bad. But you noticed some interaction between them? Yeah. And the guy you indicate is Mr. Hernandez? Yeah. Um, is that Aaron Hernandez? Yes. And you didn't know who he was at that point? No. But the person that you saw have some type of interaction with the man with the braids, do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. And can you please point him out and describe an article of clothing he's wearing? 
um, blue tie, blue jacket. Right, from the record may reflect check. the witness identified the defendant, Aaron Hernandez. When you saw uh, the defendant and, this, and the man with the braids interact, how long was the interaction? Like a second, maybe. And what did they do after the interaction? He walked away. And can you show us on the, the board letter J? Parallel with what was then the DJ booth, is that accurate? Yes. And it's directly in front of the bar, is that correct? Yes. And this is where you were positioned, sir, to the, for the record, to the left of the bar if you're looking at it? Right. Was there any other security staff down there with you, sir? There's usually a guy on the stairs, but I, I don't remember who it was at that time. And there was usually a guy on the left of the bar and the right, so I'm not sure who they were at that time. It was a long time ago. Now, Mr. Furtado, shortly after what you described, you observed, and again, at this point, you still did not know who Aaron Hernandez was. Um, did Mr. Hernandez or someone else approach you? Yes. Who approached you? I guess he was like a fan. He came along with Mr. Hernandez and asked if they could take a picture in the back room. What's the back room? Um, it's just another room that we have in the back. It's like another dance floor and, and a little bar in the back. And a letter J, is that? Um, can you point out the areas of pointed? Probably right up around here. Yeah, right up in this room. So the director, you're pointing to the area behind uh, the main bar? Yes. <coughs> is, that sometime, is that its own little bar of some sort? Yes. Is that sometimes open and sometimes closed? Yes, yeah, usually open on Fridays. But that wasn't open that night? No. So when this person described as a fan came with the defendant Aaron Hernandez and wanted to take a picture in the back room, did you ask a question? Yeah. What did you ask? I said, because he asked me if he could take a picture in the back, and I was like, for what? I was like, who, who are you? And he's like, oh, he plays football. And I was like, okay. So then I just let them go back there and take the, I took the picture for them and then after that they thanked me and they went to the main room again. And uh, to the best of your knowledge, how long did Aaron Hernandez stay after that? Probably like 20 minutes, if that. So he left shortly after? Yeah. And other than that interaction, uh, Mr. Furtado, did you see anything else happen that night? No. And what were you doing the rest of the night? Were you staying in one position or were you roaming? I was roaming. I was roaming the whole night. And roaming, uh, just for those of you who again may not work in the industry, does that mean you're going upstairs, downstairs, or are you just staying downstairs? Uh, I, go up, I go upstairs sometimes too, just to make sure everything is going smooth outside. But mainly I just roam the main room. I go in the back room to make sure nobody's back there too. Well, sir, I'm going to call your attention out to when closing time happened. And then we'll go back to exhibit 177. Okay. Shows at 2:12. Um, gentleman coming up in a shirt, tie, and jacket. Who was that? That's me. And do you have some type of earpiece? Yeah, I had an earpiece at that time. When you came outside, Mr. Furtado, were there any problems at all? Any altercations, arguments, anything like that? No, sir. Now to 214. Uh, this is you right here out in front of the ropes. Yes, it is. The uh, various people milling about on the sidewalks again. Did you notice any altercations, anything like that? Nope. I'm just calling your attention back to the interaction you described uh, seeing involving Mr. Hernandez. Could you? Uh, it, was it just between he and the man with the braids, or was there, was there somebody else with them? It was him and the guy with the braids, that's it. And the other guy that was with the guy with the braids. Another guy that was with the guy with the braids? Yeah, but he, I don't think he said anything to him, though. No. And what about anybody else with Mr. Hernandez? Was anybody else with him at that point? Not, no. I'm fast forwarding uh, again to save some time. 
Uh, does it fair to state that you assisted in the closing down of the club at this point at 220? Yes. Did that include moving gates and things like that? Yep. What was your plan that night as far as how you're going to get home, sir? I was waiting for my boy to pick me up from venue where he worked. Who was your boy? Uh, Andrew. Is that Andrew Wallace? Yes. W-A-L-L-A-C-E? Yep. Where was it? Did you have your car parked somewhere? No, he usually drove me home. We live close by to each other. For the record, sir, we're now at 2.25 a.m. Um, that's you uh, right there, sir? Yep. And who's the man you just shook hands with? That's Ugo. Ugo, U-G-O? Yes. And there appears to be a Boston police officer here. Do you know which officer that was? No. This whole time that we're watching here, sir, I'm fast forwarding. Are you still waiting for your friend Andrew to pick you up? Yes. You've now taken your jacket off and you're in what appears to be a white shirt? Yep, that's me. I'm calling your attention now to um, about 2.32, as you're waiting out here on the sidewalk, did you hear anything? Yeah, I heard a few gunshots. How many gunshots did you hear? Probably like four or five. Four or five? In what direction were they coming from? They were coming from the, my left. From where the area I was that you're looking towards here? This, yeah. this area here? Yeah. And at 2.32.45, you're getting into what appears to be a white sedan. Mm -hmm. Whose car is that, sir? It's Andrew's car. Who else was in the car? Uh, Ugo. Ugo? Yeah. And I think Dana, I think, that night. This is just another angle of the same thing you're getting in the car, sir? Mm-hmm. Sir, when you proceeded down Tremont Street, um, which uh, seat were you sitting in? I was sitting in the rear left seat. And, uh, where were you headed at that point? Oh, uh, we were going home. You are going home? Okay. And which um, direction was home? Which direction were you going to be headed? On the highway heading south towards Dorchester. As you proceeded down Tremont Street, sir, did you eventually get to the intersection of Marginal and Shawmut going over the mass uh, pipe? Yes. Bridge that goes over the mass pipe? Mm-hmm. And when you did that, sir, what, if anything, uh, did you observe? A car stopped in the middle of the road, not moving. Placing exhibit number 10 on the screen, do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph, sir? Yeah, it's the car. I wasn't is, moving. Is this the direction that you were coming from down Tremont Street? Yes. And you noticed the car was not moving, is that correct? Yep. What happened next? Uh, I saw somebody in the car next to them, like, on, on his phone. And when we got out the car, he said he was calling an ambulance. That's what he told us, you know, the cops. Did, did you stop your car? Yeah, they stopped the car. Were the police there yet? No, not at that point. Other than the man on the phone with his car, how many other cars had stopped, if you know? 
uh, probably like one or two more. I'm not sure. Did you approach Shakar at some point? Yeah, but on the sidewalk though. On the sidewalk over here. Yeah. And when you uh, got on the sidewalk, did you look into the car? Yeah. Did you look at the driver? Mm-hmm. Say yes. Yes. What did you see? Him slumped over with his mouth wide open, with his eyes closed. Did you see any injuries on him? Yeah, I think he had a couple shots in his chest and I think one in his head, if I'm not mistaken. Did he show any signs of life at that point? Nah. Did you or um, the others in the car with you attempt to render any aid or anything? I think Andrew went over to look at them, but I don't remember what he did at that point. What did you What did you see of the man in the passenger seat? Same thing. He was dead too. Did you see wounds on him? Yeah, I seen a couple on him too. What kind of wounds? I think he got hit in the chest too. Did he show any signs of life? No. Mr. Furtado, when you saw those um, two men in the interior of the car, did you recognize them from earlier that night? I did. And who did you recognize on the bait? Both of them that was in the car dead. Had you seen them in Club Cure earlier that night? Yep. And who did you see them interact with at the very beginning at about 1230? Uh, Aaron Hernandez. Thank you, sir. No further questions. Bye, yes, sir. Court, Mr. Hagan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I just have a few questions for you. I'd right. like to clear up. Um, this happened approximately almost five years ago. Right. Okay. Um, I want to kind of go over a couple of things with you, see if we can narrow some things down. Um, when people walk into the nightclub, they walk down a certain flight of steps, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you first saw Aaron Hernandez, it was right there at that flight of steps. I at, saw him coming at down. The bottom, at the bottom. Yes. And you noticed him because of his size? Not really. But okay. I see a lot of big guys every week. There weren't that many people in that club. No, not that night. Okay. And when people walk down the stairs, uh, you don't know who's with who, right? Depends. Sometimes you do. Okay. Uh, let's let's take take a look here. I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit. Okay, this is the gentleman with the braids, right? Yep. Okay. Now. Then you see Aaron right behind the gentleman, correct? Yes. And you see a third gentleman right there. Okay. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, there's a screen in front of you. Can you circle the third, the, the other gentleman that you see going down the stairs? Perfect. Now, you had previously described both the man in the braids and that gentleman as being Hispanic, right? Yes. Okay, because they appeared Hispanic to you. Is that a yes? yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, so they all came down the stairs at the same time, right? Correct. Okay. Now you had never known any, you had never seen the three of them previously? No, sir. Okay. So you don't know them? Nope. And you don't know if they're even together, you just see them together coming down the stairs, right? Correct. Okay. Now. Uh, In September, on September 5th, 2013, you came and appeared before the grand jury? Correct. Okay. 
and you told you told them everything you knew. Right. Okay. And when you when you testified before the grand jury, you you stated that Aaron had come down the stairs with two guys. Correct. And those are the two guys you're referring to. No, the other one I saw. Okay. You saw another person with them? Yes. Okay. Um, now, when they came down, I, I heard you testify that there was no real interaction between them, just small talk? Yeah, it was a small talk. Okay. And you mentioned that the two Hispanic guys were there and Aaron walked away. Right. Okay. So it was a brief encounter. Uh, and then you saw Aaron walk away by himself. Yep. Okay. Um, the, the you didn't see anybody with drinks in their hands being spilled or anything like that. No, sir. Okay. You didn't see them dancing and bumping into Aaron or any kind of. No, uh, sir. No, sir. Anything negative or aggressive, right? No, sir. Because that's of course would be your job to step in and prevent something before it happens. That's right and pre prevent anything before it gets out of hand. Yes. Okay. Um, so, after that, about 10 minutes later, someone came up to you, uh, so, uh, Aaron came up to you actually. Right. Okay. And then, this is about 10 minutes after he got into the nightclub, right? Correct. Okay. And he walked up to you and asked if you would take a picture with a fan? Yes. Okay, and, and you were kind enough to do that? Right. Okay, and when you did that, um, the fan told you that that's Aaron Hernandez. Correct. Okay, and that's the only time and the very first time you ever became aware of who he actually was? Correct. Okay, um, and do you recall telling the grand jury that after taking the photo, he left after that? He did, yeah. Okay. Um, so when you say he stayed in the club 20 to 30 minutes, that's really what well, you think in total? total, in total. Yeah. Got it, okay. So right after the photo, Aaron left? Yeah, probably about a few minutes later or so, yeah. Okay. Um, you weren't watching Aaron the whole time, were you? Um, not really. I didn't see him really interacting with nobody like that. Okay. So um, when Aaron came up to you and asked you to take a photo, did he seem upset? No, not Seemed at all. Angry, like he wanted to kill somebody? No. I'm okay. Uh, was he interacting with the fan in a kind way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was taking time out of uh, his fun to go in and take a photo with someone? Correct. Uh, the objection is sustained as to that question. Okay. Um, I, I guess the word I'm looking for, he was gracious for, with the fan. Yeah. yeah. That me stand. And he wasn't snobby or anything like that with the fans. No. Okay. We'll hurt a little. If I can have just a moment, I might just be finished. thing um, you were at the other end of the bar when you saw the guys come down the stairs right correct and you obviously with the music going and being so far away you didn't hear any of what they were saying no it wasn't it was something brief couldn't be anything derogatory towards each other and since you can't hear what's being said you don't know if Aaron was speaking to one individual to all of them or or well, I've seen which him. one I seen them talking to the the one with the braids. Okay, but you heard, you saw them interacting, and it was just brief. Yeah. In a sense. Okay. Uh, one more one.
just one moment. I'm, uh, direct your attention to the entry of who's going down the stairs. Okay. See this white male here? Yes. Okay. The next individual to go down the stairs is the gentleman with the braids, correct? Yep. <clears throat> and then followed by Aaron. All right. And then followed by the other gentleman that was with Aaron. Correct. You see that they're all going down by themselves, the three of them? Yep. I have no further questions. Thank you. Couple quick questions. First, uh, Mr. Byers asked you about uh, being the only time that you uh, saw or met Aaron Hernandez by name was that night. Had you seen him uh, on occasion after July 16, 2012? Yeah. And over the next year almost, um, did you see Mr. Hernandez multiple times? Yeah. Where? I used to come in with the Patriots a lot. So there were multiple occasions where you come in where? Um, and to cure. So did he, based upon that night forward, your memory, did he become a regular club cure? Yeah, well, I've seen him a few times after that, and I wouldn't say he was a regular. And lastly, sir, you asked a number of questions by Mr. Baez about uh, the second man that Mr. Hernandez was with, not talking to you, but was with when he interacted with the man with the braids. And I believe when Mr. Baez circled this man, you said, no, that wasn't the man who was with him. It was a different Hispanic male, correct? Yeah. And the different Hispanic male who was with him, did you see that person at the car uh, when you saw the shooting? Yes. Where was that? Or, or who was that? Was that the man in the passenger seat? No, 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 no. Where did you see him? This guy? Not this guy. The guy who was with him when uh, there was the interaction with the man with the braids. Oh, downstairs. But it was a different man than this man, correct? Yeah, it wasn't that guy. And did you see that person later at the crime scene? Yeah. Where did you see him? In the passenger seat. And he was dead? Yes. Thank you, sir. No further questions. Mr. Furtado, I apologize. I just want to clear something up. Um, do you recall testifying before the grand jury that Aaron Hernandez came down the stairs with two guys? Yes. Okay. And that when asked how would you describe the two guys he came down with you you said hispanic and one had like corn roll braids yes okay so those are the two hispanic guys that you saw him coming down the stairs with mm -hmm. is that his yeah and that and the interaction that you describe aaron having are with those two guys correct yes okay and when you saw the individuals there in the car that night, it's a pretty traumatic event, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Okay, and that area is a dark area as well? Yes, it is. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thank Please you. Step Please watch your step. Yep. I'm off. Can we refresh briefly? You may. <clears throat>